Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Stay Road A1A Mid-Block Crossings public meeting. My name is Kevin Marquez, and I am the project manager with the Florida Department of Transportation. During the meeting, we'll present information on the department's plans to improve safety and enhance operations through this project. We encourage your feedback, and during the presentation, we'll provide multiple ways you can submit your questions and comments to us about this project. All comments and questions will be responded to in writing and will become part of the public meeting record. I will now turn it over to our project team to begin the presentation. Meeting information is being provided in multiple ways to allow the community to receive information about the projects and provide input. This meeting is being conducted in person and virtually through GoToWebinar. For those listening to the meeting over the phone, the presentation is available on the project webpage at www.cflroads.com forward slash project forward slash 992300-1. For online participants in the GoToWebinar application, you will see a set of icons in the top right corner of the menu bar. Click the questions icon where the red arrow is pointing to open the questions panel. Type your question into the field where the red arrow is now pointing to and hit send to submit your question or comment to project staff. To download documents about the project, click on the materials icon where the red arrow is pointing to open the documents panel. Inside are project files that can be viewed or downloaded. If joining GoToWebinar on your mobile device, click the questions icon at the bottom of your screen. This will open the questions panel where you can enter your question or comment into the field and hit send. Click the handouts icon at the bottom to open the documents panel where you will find project files to view and download. If you happen to experience a technical issue during this meeting, please type the issue in the questions box on the control panel on GoToWebinar or send an email to chuck at valerin-group.com to report it. You may also call 1-833-851-8340. Staff will do their best to assist you. This public meeting was advertised and is being conducted in accordance with state and federal requirements, including Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Public participation is solicited without regard to race, color, national origin, age, sex, religion, disability, or family status. Persons wishing to express their concerns about Title VI may do so by contacting Melissa McKinney, District 5 Title VI Coordinator, by mail at 719 South Woodland Boulevard, Mail Station 501, Deland, Florida, 32720, by phone at 386-943-5077 or email melissa.mckinney at dot.state.fl.us. You may also contact Stefan Kulikowski, State Title VI Coordinator, by mail at 605 Swanee Street, Mail Station 65, Tallahassee, Florida, 32399-0450, by phone at 850-414-4742, or email at stefan.kulikowski at dot.state.fl.us. This information is shown on a sign at the in-person location, on the project website, and in the meeting notifications. The purpose of tonight's meeting is to explain the project goals, present the department's recommended improvements to help achieve those goals, and hear from the community about the proposed changes. This project is located in Brevard County on State Road A1A, north of Watson Drive and north of East Coral Way. The Financial Project Identification Number, or FPID, for this project is 992300-1. With the goal of enhancing safety along the corridor and at the request of citizens in the surrounding neighborhoods, FDOT completed crosswalk studies 
identifying two mid-block crossing locations on State Road A1A that warrant pedestrian-activated signals known as Rectangular Rapid Flashing Beacons, or RRFBs. The first location is north of Watson Drive, near the public beach access entrance at Sunrise Park. This artist rendering shows the proposed crosswalk location and configuration north of Watson Drive, in front of the public supermarket and just north of the public beach access at Sunrise Park. The second location is north of East Coral Way, near the public beach access entrance. This artist rendering shows the proposed crosswalk location and configuration north of East Coral Way, in front of Silver Palm Condominiums. FDOT is also proposing new sidewalk from the mid-block crossing to the public beach entrance on the northbound side of State Road A1A. Curbs and curb ramps will be constructed at both crosswalk locations to meet current Americans with Disabilities Act ADA standards. So, what exactly is an RRFB? As shown in the artist's rendering, an RRFB consists of two rapid flashing yellow lights that are mounted below yellow pedestrian crossing signs. The flashing lights remain dark until they are activated by a pedestrian wishing to cross. Once a pedestrian pushes the button, audible warnings are activated. FDOT will also be installing lights in the roadway to add a secondary warning feature for drivers. While motorists are legally required to stop for pedestrians in any crosswalk in the state of Florida, RRFBs increase driver awareness and visibility at mid-block crossings. Let's look at how a pedestrian will interact with the RRFB. Upon approaching the crosswalk, the beacon will be dark and cars will be proceeding normally. Pedestrians are encouraged to push the button to activate the beacon, thus making their intent to cross more noticeable to motorists. Upon pressing the button to activate the signal, pedestrians may enter the crosswalk when motorists have come to a complete stop or if no traffic is present closer than a safe stopping distance. Pedestrians will notice the flashing yellow lights or supplemental lights on the side of the RRFB to let them know the device has been activated. The flashing lights on the beacon will continue for a short time, allowing pedestrians to cross. Finally, after pedestrians have completed crossing and the RRFB has stopped flashing, any approaching pedestrians will have to press the button again to activate the RRFB, repeating the cycle. Now, let's look at how a motorist will interact with the RRFB. The RRFB's default state is dark until a pedestrian presses the button to cross. The motorist may proceed with caution if no pedestrians are in the crosswalk. Once a pedestrian presses the button, indicating they're ready to cross, the yellow lights begin to flash rapidly. The motorist must stop or clear the crossing if they are too close to stop safely. Motorists must remain stopped while pedestrians cross. The beacon will continue to flash and motorists may proceed once the pedestrians clear their lane. Finally, the beacons will return to dark and motorists may proceed with traffic when there are no pedestrians in the crosswalk. The beacons will remain dark until a new pedestrian approaches the crossing and presses the button. Every bicyclist and pedestrian is important to someone. FDOT encourages everyone to visit www.alerttodayflorida.com for more information about RRFBs and Florida's pedestrian and bicycle-focused initiatives. Moving forward, the design of this project is in progress and anticipated to be complete in spring of 2024 at an estimated cost of $41,000. The improvements on this project 
will be within the existing right-of-way. Construction for this project is funded for spring or summer of 2024 at an estimated cost of $350,000. We encourage your input and feedback about this project, and there are multiple ways for you to participate. All public comments and questions are part of the public meeting record, and every method for providing public comments and questions carries equal weight. While comments and questions will be accepted at any time, those submitted by December 11, 2023, 11 days after the public meeting, will become part of the project's public meeting record. All comments and questions will be responded to in writing. To submit a comment or a question online, please type the comment or question in the question box on the GoToWebinar control panel. Written comments may also be submitted on the project website at www.cflroads.com forward slash project forward slash 992300-1. You may also contact FDOT Project Manager Kevin Marquez directly by email at kevin.marquez at dot.state.fl.us or by U.S. Mail at the Florida Department of Transportation, 719 South Woodland Boulevard, Mail Station 562, The Land, Florida, 32720. You may also call Mr. Marquez at 386-943-5527 to provide verbal comments during normal business hours. The contact information is also available on the public meeting notification that you may have received by mail. To learn more about these projects, go to www.cflroads.com, type the project number 992300-1 in the search box at the top right and click Go. Then click on the project name. Public meeting materials are posted on the website now. On behalf of the Florida Department of Transportation, thank you for attending this public meeting and providing your input on this project. If you have comments or questions after the meeting, please submit them by December 11, 2023. Have a good evening.